Hello, I'm Barbara Troutler. Welcome to this edition of the ASP Hot Topic webisode series. In this installment, we will address an important question being asked by our customer. Why is it important to ensure that instruments are completely dry prior to sterilizing? As you know, proper sterilization is an integral and key component of raising the standards of care for patients and if not done properly, may compromise the sterilization process. To help ensure that your staff understands the importance of eliminating moisture from instruments, many professional associations have created guidelines and instructions for drying. To share with you some of the key reasons why these guidelines are important and how they can impact your facility's sterility assurance, here is Kathy Rocco. Thank you, Barbara. Hi, I'm Kathy Rocco, Senior Clinical Education Consultant for ASP. As Barbara noted, properly drying instruments is crucial to the sterilization process. I'm going to walk you through why drying medical instruments for sterilization is critical and then discuss drying recommendations and tips. After the cleaning of instruments, the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, and Association for the Advancement of Medical Instrumentation, AMI, Standard 79, 2010 with Amendment 2012, state, all instruments should then be thoroughly rinsed. Water-soluble instrument lubricants specifically designed for compatibility with sterilization may be used, and the manufacturer's written instructions for use, IFUs, should be followed. Instrument lubricants containing mineral oil or other oil bases should not be used, except to lubricate the internal mechanism of powered instruments as specified by the manufacturer. Instruments should be carefully inspected for flaws, damage, debris, detergent residue, and completeness, and then dried before packaging or sterilization. It's important to note that devices with lumens should not be dried if they require moistening with distilled or deionized water before steam sterilization. The Association of Perioptive Registered Nurses, or AORN, recommended practices for cleaning and care of surgical instruments and powered equipment. Note that instruments should be thoroughly dried for two reasons. Number one, the elimination of moisture helps prevent rust formation during instrument storage, and number two, the presence of moisture can impede the sterilization process. Now that we've discussed why drying is important, let's discuss some guidance on how to achieve proper drying. Instrumentation must be carefully dried regardless of the sterilization system used, and common methods for drying include towel drying, drying cabinet, syringes, and medical grade compressed air. Standard 79 8.4.1 from Amy notes that excess moisture from cleaning and rinsing should be removed using filtered medical grade compressed air. Depending on the device, drying can be accomplished in a short amount of time using this method. When using medical grade compressed air, it is important that your staff refers to the medical device manufacturing IFUs for the maximum air pressure that can be used to assist with drying lumens. Another important piece of advice is to consider the presence of moisture beyond just the instrument you are drying and to make sure that the trays, closed rigid containers, and other accessories are completely dry. Because the presence of moisture can impede the sterilization process, it is good to know how different sterilization modalities may respond to the presence of moisture at the time of sterilization. For example, Although many factors may contribute to wet loads, if moisture is present during steam sterilization, the sterilizer may experience condensation issues. AORN standards note that moisture on instrument surfaces alters the moisture content of steam and can pose a challenge for effective heating of the instrument. Additionally, the presence of moisture during ethylene oxide ETO sterilization may result in hazardous ethylene oxide residuals such as ethylene glycol, i.e. antifreeze, as the ethylene oxide combines with water. It's important to note that ethylene glycol is not removed during aeration. Lastly, there's hydrogen peroxide gas plasma sterilization. Excess moisture during hydrogen peroxide gas plasma sterilization inhibits the hydrogen peroxide plasma sterilization process and can result in an aborted cycle. The canceled cycle 
which occurs when moisture is present, prevents the possibility of compromised sterility. AORN recommends using low temperature hydrogen peroxide gas plasma sterilization methods to sterilize moisture and heat sensitive items. The 2012 AORN recommended practices for sterilization state that items to be sterilized using low temperature hydrogen peroxide gas plasma sterilization should be clean, thoroughly dry, and packaged in sterilization wraps, pouches, trays, or containers cleared by the FDA for use in hydrogen peroxide gas plasma sterilization systems. When choosing infection prevention solutions, it may be valuable to evaluate systems such as ASP sterad systems, which cancel the sterilization cycle when moisture is detected to help you provide the highest level of sterility assurance for your patients. This built-in safety mechanism serves as a moisture check and does not exist in other modalities. Thanks, Kathy, and thank you for joining us today. To learn more about ASP's Sterad Systems and Sterility Guide, please contact your ASP representative or visit ASPJJ.com. Stay tuned for the next edition of the ASP Hot Topic webisode series, where we address topics that matter to you. As always, please make sure you check out our growing library of Hot Topic webisodes available for on-demand viewing. I'm Barbara Trattler, and we'll see you next time.